Act 2, Scene G. Interior, doctor's office, swing set, day. Cold, sterile doctor's office. Deborah, in a paper robe, sits on the table. Courtney, in a nearby chair. Deborah squirms uncomfortably. Uh, the doctors should have to wear this paper bullshit, too. Level the playing field. Do you have an overwhelming desire to see this dude's hairy ass? Maybe. Okay, I'm on it. Before Deb can respond, the door opens and Dr. Sampson, 60s, enters. He greets Deborah without looking up from her chart. Okay, Deborah, blood pressure looks good, some weight gain, but that's normal for a woman your age. Good. Want to make sure I'm deteriorating right on schedule. He looks up at her, not sure of what to make of this comment. Notices Courtney. Oh, is this your partner? You mean like sexual partner? I wish. She is a rock star in bed. Deborah mouths, stop it, to Courtney, who mouths, what, back. Dr. Sampson looks through the chart, confused. Okay, so I ordered an MRI? I don't have a record of that. No, I ordered an MRI, out of pocket. You didn't think it was necessary. The door opens, and Maya enters. What's up, my bitches? Deborah looks at Courtney. Did you tell everybody about my appointment? I may have told Maya. The door opens and Natalie enters. And possibly Natalie. I'm sorry. We really aren't supposed to have more than one person in the room with the patient. He recognizes Natalie. Oh my god. You're... Nona. I love your show. It's hysterical. Thanks. We try. I love how you're always trying to hook up with those young hot guys and they're like, pass, because... Because of my dry vagina? That instantly destroyed anything funny about it. Dead, heavy silence fills the room. The women grin, delighted. Dr. Sampson looks at the MRI results. So, Deborah, how long have you had these fibroids? They're actually pretty large. The women share a stunned look. Fibroids? You told her the pain was from irritable bowel syndrome. Well, the symptoms can be confused for each other. By a first-year medical student. Or a Walmart cashier. I'm going to go full cunt on this guy. No cunting. Sit. I thought women hated that word. We're using the British cunt. Not me. The important thing is what we do next. I want to run some more tests before we start talking about... He looks around at the room. You can say it. A hysterectomy. Well, despite what Dr. Google might have told you, a hysterectomy is the very last option, usually when things have gone untreated for a long time. The women stare daggers at him. He quickly exits. Deborah stares into the void. Kit. I'll never have Kit. I love Trevor. You know I do. But Cole promised me. He promised me I'd have my girl. Fucker promised you a lot of things. Can't we just murder him? That's not going to solve anything. We could do it just in case. The whole time he pretended to be in love with me, my insides were dying. And now that his Disney villain of a mother is dead, he's loaded. Fucking California inheritance law. You deserve half that money. Hell, you deserve more than half for all the shit you took from her. I don't have a house. I don't have savings. Can't get a writing gig. And now I'm never going to have my kit. Well, on the bright side, she'll never have to find out that she was named after a car in Knight Rider. Deborah laughs hard. It turns into sobbing. The women all surround her in a hug as we cut to 